On behalf of Superintendent Teresa Weatherall Neal, I'm pleased to present you with this presentation about the bond proposal to secure, connect, and transform Grand Rapids Public Schools. This bond proposal is not new. In fact, it is history in the making. This storyline started 11 years ago with the Phase 1 Building Improvement Plan. At that time, Superintendent Burt Blakey led the community along with uh, a steering committee comprised of students, parents, teachers, community members, neighbors, in an extensive six-month community engagement process to look at the facility and technology issues of Grand Rapids Public Schools. Remember, we're the second oldest school system in the state of Michigan, and as such, we have some of the oldest school facilities that are in need of upkeep and, in many cases, replacement. And so at that time, the recommendations of the Phase 1 plan came out and said we need to focus in on our elementary, our middle school, and our K-8 facilities. Uh, at the time, uh, the old Henry School, the Henry Padilla School, was the, the, the poster child for the bond campaign. Uh, 60 Minutes had done a feature on this school and really uh, explained how dilapidated it was and the, the mold and the other issues that were in that, uh, that school that did not create a healthy learning environment. And so we focused in on these 10 projects, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Academy, Elger Middle, Sibley Elementary, Harrison Park, Gerald R. Ford, which is the old Madison School, Burton Elementary and Middle School, Dickinson, Palmer, Kent Hills, and North Park. When we proposed these 10 projects, this was part of a $165 million bond proposal from 2004. The voters of Grand Rapids approved that by 60%. $150 million was dedicated for renovations and construction, and then $15 million was for technology. Thanks to good, sound fiscal management, good planning, these 10 projects, these were the major renovation projects, they came in on time and under budget, which allowed us to do the two bonus projects, Cesar Chavez and Houseman Field. That was a savings originally of around $17 million that we were able to then invest in these two projects that were not previously planned so that we could stretch those bond dollars as far as we could to not just do these major renovations, but to also benefit every single school in the district. We believe that this, these bonus projects are also very symbolic of the good stewardship, of how we've managed these taxpayer dollars. We've done so very well, and, and uh, we have a great track record. You'll hear more about that in a minute. As part of the Phase 1 recommendations, they also said you need to come back in five years and look at a Phase 2 building improvement plan because that $165 million was not enough to cover the needs. In fact, that the list of needs is more than double that. But we had to be sensitive to how much we could ask the voters for. Uh, $165 million at that time was right in the sweet spot, and that's why we asked for that much and not more or less. So fast forward to 2008, we engaged in a similar six-month community engagement process and uh, the Community Steering Committee recommended a phase two plan focused predominantly on the high schools along with finishing some of the work at the elementary and the K-8 level. Uh, the recommendations also include reducing the number of comprehensive high schools from four to two. It included expanding the number of more thematic-based high schools and obviously looking at those elementary and the K-8s. However, that was 2008 and we were in the midst of an economic recession and the Board of Education and the superintendent at that time said nope. The time is not right. We're going to hit the pause button. So we had to come up with creative solutions to bridge that gap between then and now. And one of the things we did is create a new model by which public schools across this country are looking to Grand Rapids to say, how did you do it? We, we built University Prep Academy and Blandford School with next to no taxpayer dollars. We launched a capital fundraising campaign and raised almost 12 million for the University Prep School and about 2.4 million for the Blandford School. So not a single local or state taxpayer dollar went into constructing these facilities. The only, only tax dollars that were used were federal food service dollars for the cafeteria and the kitchen. The second thing we did and we did ask the voters for some help. Uh, we have boilers that were failing. We have roofs that were leaking. We had HVAC systems that were, were breaking down. Uh, we had pipes that were leaky and, break, and broken. And so we needed a temporary fix. In 2011, 
we went to the voters of Grand Rapids and asked for them to approve kind of a, a stopgap measure, what we call the warm, safe, and dry millage. Uh, this is also known as a sinking fund millage, and these are dollars that are only used for the basic maintenance and upkeep. And because of the cuts in state school funding and the limited per pupil funding we got from the state, uh, there was not enough funding to address these facility needs. And so the sinking fund was approved by the voters by 53% of the vote. Before I talk about the next steps, before I talk about the transformation plan and this bond proposal, I think it's very important to step back and look at where we've been because GRPS has been in a state of churn for two decades. We lost 8,000 students, we closed 35 schools, we cut $100 million out of our budget and eliminated 1,000 jobs. This state of churn has actually been part of our challenge, both from an academic standpoint and a financial standpoint. You know, we'd lose enrollment, we'd have to close a school, lay off staff, upset parents, reshuffle the staff, upset more parents who would result in declining enrollment further, closing more schools, and that cycle continued. We need to stop the churn, and that's where Teresa Weatherell Neal came in. In January 2012, she was appointed superintendent of Grand Rapids Public Schools. She launched an aggressive listening tour, asking what's working, what's not working, what are barriers, and what are ideas, what are innovations. She took the results of that tour, along with the phase two building improvement plan that was approved in 2008, but never acted upon. She felt it was very important that we must honor the work of those thousand plus parents and community members that participated in that process in 2008. So we took those recommendations along with the listening tour, the academic plan, a strategic plan that was done in 2011, and the Cambridge audit. Put them all into this GRPS transformation plan. This transformation is about stability and growth. There were three core values to the GRPS transformation plan. One, invest in what's working, stop doing what's not working. While that seems like common sense, we had been doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And Teresa said, nope, we need to go big all at once, and we need to close some buildings. We closed 10 buildings, including Creston High School, her alma mater, and we, but it wasn't just to cut and close our way out of that decline. We need to invest for that stability. And so we're gonna go on the offensive. We're gonna invest in those schools that are working. We're also gonna invest in our talent, talent retention and recruitment. We know the number one factor in determining academic achievement is the quality and effectiveness of the teacher in the classroom and the leader in the school building. And we have completely overhauled our HR department and our talent strategies. That's a huge part, it's a core pillar of this transformation plan. And third, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, we are investing for stability and growth. We cannot afford to cut and close our way out of this decline. We have got to restore stability and growth. During that two decade decline, we had some schools that had different principals each year for five years in a row. You had classrooms where the parents didn't know whether the teacher was gonna be staying or going because we were doing district-wide layoffs every year or every other year. We kept reshuffling the schools, reshuffling the staff, and that just exacerbated our declining enrollment. It exacerbated our academic challenges and just has been contributing to this kind of vicious cycle that we were stuck in. Well, that cycle is stopping now and it stopped with the introduction of this GRPS transformation plan. We are looking to stop the churn. So phase one of the transformation plan focused in on all of these items, expanding K-8s, pooling our centers of innovation, the academies of business, leadership, entrepreneurship, academy of health sciences, academy of modern engineering, academy of design and construction, pooling them all under one roof at Innovation Central High, which by the way, that school today has an 88% graduation rate and are averaging between 400 and 600 parents and students per month at their, at their monthly parent meetings. That's almost unheard of in, in a large comprehensive high school like that. We are reinvesting in our theme schools. Part of those budget cuts from, from the 20 years, uh, we took away the theme funding. We took our best schools, most uh, academically strong and most attractive to parents with waiting lists, and we, we took away their funding. We cut them off at the knees, and this plan puts that funding back in and says we are committed to reinvesting in our theme schools. We're also expanding the number of theme schools. Uh, we converted Gerald R. Ford Middle School to the new Gerald R. Ford Academic Center. 
We reopened stocking school, a school that many can argue, and we and Teresa argued we shouldn't have closed it in the first place, and we reopened that school. Now that facility is full of students from that immediate walkable community. We are piloting a cutting edge neighborhood school reclamation project at both Congress and Mulek Park Elementary. This is turning out to be a model for how do our schools learn how to better re-engage with their neighborhood and vice versa. How do we get our neighborhoods to reclaim their neighborhood school? And you have something really special. We're looking to expand that uh, to a couple sites as part of the phase two plan. We're transforming central office. For the longest time, tr central office was operating under an old top-down, heavy-handed way of, of running a public school system. That was a 20th century outdated model. Uh, we have transformed it so central office is there, of course, to maintain accountability, but more importantly, to provide customer support to our schools on the ground. We need to be there to support our principals, support our teachers, support the staff, the students, and the parents on the ground. And that's a culture shift within GRPS that's happening. We reduced the number of comprehensive high schools from three to two. We, implementing school, we are implementing school uniforms district-wide, and in fact, we've done the elementary and K-8s. We did middle schools, next year we do high schools. It's been phased in over three years. Overhauling the Human Resource Department. This is all about that talent retention, recruitment, development. Our HR department was operating in the 20th century. You know, the way to recruit was to post an ad in the Grand Rapids Press. That has got maybe a part of it, but we must be more aggressive. We have to get out there and actively recruit from the colleges and universities, from other schools, whether they're private or public or charter. We, are, we have a great school system. We're going to find that talent and bring them in. We're also looking to expand the Challenge Scholars. This is kind of the Kalamazoo Promise-esque initiative over on the west side of Grand Rapids where students, if when they're at sixth grade Harrison, sixth grade Westwood, if they persist to graduate from Union, their college is paid for. Uh, this is something where in the first year phase uh, of the transformation plan, we expanded it to Westwood. So now Westwood and Harrison students are growing up to attend Union and in a few short years graduate and have their college paid for. We're also looking to expand Kent School Services Network. KSSN are the wraparound services, Department of Human Services, Network 180, Community Mental Health, all of them embedded within a school, and we found those to be very effective at the existing sites. We should be expanding those at others. Notably, all of this, all this change, happened in less than a year. In fact, the Board of Education approved this plan unanimously in December, 12, uh, December of 2012, and we had the doors open to the transformed GRPS that next summer. That day after Labor Day, all of this was implemented, which is a testament to the employees and the unity around this comprehensive plan. This district has come together and united around a comprehensive plan that's producing results, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now we're in phase two. Now is when we invest for growth. We go on the offensive for the first time in 20 years. We are looking at our, our schools that are successful, like C.A. Frost Environmental Science Academy. Currently a K-8, the parents said we want it to be K-12. And so starting next year, we're expanding pre-K through 12th grade that, that will be at the current Frost site. And we're looking to reopen the old Coville Elementary to renovate and expand that facility to serve as the C.A. Frost Environmental Science Academy High School and activate that back wooded lot. There's a wooded lot with a ravine that's very much kind of Blandford Nature Center asks on a much smaller scale. So we're looking to put in some nature trails, outdoor classroom, and activate that property, not just for school use, but for neighborhood and city park use as well. Secondly, we're looking to expand zoo school. Currently it's sixth grade with only 60 students, yet we've got about 200 applications for that school. We're looking to now expand that sixth through eighth grade uh, at the zoo site, and it's part of the zoo's new master plan. So it'll be a beautiful new state-of-the-art facility located right on the pond, overlooking the pond. Uh, we're also looking to create a new zoo school track at the Frost High School. The zoo parents told us they would like to see a 6th through 12th grade option. 
The zoo site does not have the capacity for that, so we came up with a, uh, an alternate plan. We said, well, why not do 6-8, but then create a 9-12 track at the Frost High School because it's already an environmental theme to begin with. The parents are particularly excited about what this option looks like for zoo and Frost parents and students. We're opening the new Grand Rapids Public Museum School next year, starting with sixth grade. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade will be at the Van Andel Museum Center. Ninth through 12 will be, will be at the old Grand Rapids Public Museum building at 54 Jefferson, the original public museum building, which notably, in 1937, uh, GRPS, which originally managed and operated the museum, deeded that property over to the city of Grand Rapids. And we are now working with the city of Grand Rapids on how do we uh, acquire and partner with them on this unique project. It's also important to note, there were 200 applications for the 60 slots half of whom have never sent their kids to a GRPS school. And of that half, uh, nearly uh, uh, about 50% lived outside the city. So this plan is not only attracting existing students, but also new students to come and be part of the Grand Rapids Public School portfolio of schools. We are also looking to transform an existing school into an International Baccalaureate Arts Academy. We have the IB Academy at City High Middle. They have the International Baccalaureate is the platinum standard for K-12 excellence on an international scale. We are the region's first and only IB diploma program and IB de middle years program at City High Middle. We are now looking to create the elementary IB program and we would do it at an existing school. We're also looking to develop the Central Campus Master Plan. Innovation Central High Campus and the Museum School were the first two K-12 projects in the history of Grand Rapids downtown planning included in the downtown master plan. Our, our downtown Grand Rapids Inc., thanks to their vision, their leadership, they see the value of if we want Grand Rapids to have the best, most vibrant downtown to attract people to live, work, and play, K-12, having a strong public school choices, need to be part of that. The museum school and the central campus master plan are the first K-12 projects ever to be included, and they're the first projects that are K-12 that the DDA has ever put any of their tax increment dollars to support. We're also looking to expand Southwest Community Campus from a K-8 to a pre-K-12. This is similar to CA Frost. This is a program where it's one of our top schools. It's a uh, English Spanish immersion program that has a waiting list and the parents have said we want this to be through 12th grade not just through 8th grade and so we're looking to expand that as well. We're also going to continue with our talent retention recruitment, continue central office reform, fully implement challenge scholars and expand KSSN. Now Teresa Weatherall Neal, our superintendent, made it very clear she would not ask the voters or the taxpayers of Grand Rapids for a single dime or a single vote until we could prove success of phase one of the GRPS transformation plan. And the success story is quite remarkable. Our graduation rates are up. Our test scores are up. Staff morale is up. In fact, we did a back to school event at the Delta Plex and there's a video and one of the staff members said, in it, getting choked up when she said it, said, it feels like we're a family again. And that's what's happening. There's unity rallying around a, 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 a leader and Teresa Weatherall Neal, rallying around the GRPS plan. And for the first time in, in a long time, our team of staff, we are in the boat together, rowing in the same direction, and that's helping to pick up the energy and the momentum. Our bond rating is up. We are one of the first urban districts in the state, if not across the country, to see our bond rating go from negative to stable in the midst of a recession, midst of budget cuts at the state level, and in the midst of declining enrollment. We have maintained a stable bond rating now for four years in a row, and this year's rating actually made reference to the fact that they may increase it further because of the encouragement they are seeing about the growth of our fund balance as well as the stability of our enrollment. And I'll talk about that in a second. Our professional development has increased and is comprehensive across the board. As part of our talent strategy, we knew we have got to work to develop our professionals, not just the teachers, not just the principals, but all 3,000 employees. And prior to this transformation plan, 
There was not a very coordinated strategy. We now have a professional development strategy that is emerging as a model for other large urban districts to follow, and we're very uh, excited about that. And this next one, this is arguably the most symbolic of stability being restored to the district is our enrollment. We had the single best count day in two decades this last fall. Typically, we've lost between 400 and 600 students per year. In some cases, it was even more than that. We were projected to lose 400 students this year. We only lost 27. We, that is so close to breaking even, which is unheard of amongst most urban districts in the state. Better yet, not only did we have the best fall count, but the fall to the spring count, where we typically lose 100 to 200 students over that period of time, we actually gained 15 students. That is virtually unheard of in urban education. There's something special that's happening at GRPS. Thanks to this transformation plan, thanks to all the support we've received from the parents, the community, the students, the teachers, the staff, we are restoring stability to this district and those count day numbers prove it. Lastly, the chronic absenteeism, our attendance is up. We've been able to cut chronic absenteeism by 25% over the last three years. This is the GRPS success story. This is what's driving the energy, the excitement, the momentum. And this is why Superintendent Teresa Weatherall Neal is asking the board and this community to consider this bond proposal. Now look at these graphs. The top one does the most justice. We, the, if you remember, I showed you those two decades of churn. Well, this is those graphs broken out differently. Last year was the first year in two decades that we didn't close a single school. This year was the second year in a row we didn't close a single school. And next year, we're opening a school. We're going on the offensive. We're seeking to not just stabilize, but grow the district, which will mean uh, academic and financial stability gets restored, which will have positive impacts on graduation rates, on test scores, on talent retention recruitment, all of the things we said we need to do, this will positively impact that. And then that bottom graph, which doesn't quite capture what I'd like it to, but the, 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 the enrollment is stabilizing. We project within the next year or two, we believe we will return to growth. We will be one of the first urban districts in Michigan and one of relatively few of our size across the country that are actually increasing enrollment, not declining in enrollment. Another great success story is the praise we got just a few months ago from WalletHub.com. Grand Rapids Public Schools ranked the nation's second most efficient school district. Business Journal editorialized that GRPS gives more bang for the buck than every other school district save for one in the entire country. This is further evidence of that good, sound fiscal management, the stewardship that we've shown in the face of declining enrollment, in the face of major state budget cuts, in the face of all of the challenges, that economic recession, all these things, these last two decades, we've been able to keep this ship uh, righted and now we're going on the offensive and this should be further evidence to the voters and the taxpayers that with this bond that we're proposing they can trust that it's going to be well managed it's going to be in good hands and we're going to make sure to get the maximum bang for the buck uh, with these uh, taxpayer dollars so the grps bond is to secure to connect and to transform this bond is being proposed at $175 million, and that would be $10 million for technology, $10 million for security, and $155 million for uh, renovations and construction. But this is not about buildings. As much as, yes, the funds will go for our school buildings for security and technology, this bond is about much more than that. This bond is about the future stability and growth of Grand Rapids Public Schools. That stability and growth of GRPS is not just an education issue. It's not just a city issue. It is a regional issue. It is an economic development issue. It is a workforce development issue. It is a quality of life issue. If we want to recruit and retain families, talent, and job providers to live, work, and play here in Grand Rapids, if we want Grand Rapids to be the best mid-sized city in America, we need a stable, 
strong and growing public school system and the GRPS transformation plan is working. It is leading us there. This bond proposal is about injecting fuel into this fire that's already burning and to keep that momentum going. Version 1.0, this is simply the version, our best thinking based on what we know about our schools, about what we learned from the phase two building improvement plan. And so you can see Innovation Central High uh, and, and the high schools are getting the, the vast majority. You're around 22, almost 24 million total for the whole Innovation Central campus. You're looking at um, 17 million for the City High Middle facility, 17 million for Ottawa Hills, 26 million for Union, 20 million for Southwest Community Campus. That's that new high school facility where we will need to acquire land and build a new facility. Riverside Middle and Westwood at 4.5 million each. The museum and the zoo, now they're listed only at two million in bond money. We're very intentional on that. Teresa Weatherall Neal, our superintendent has said, the message to the voters is that we're not asking the taxpayers of Grand Rapids to pick up the full bill that we had a model for how we can raise private funds and do a public-private partnership where we braid the public and the private dollars to get maximum impact. And so later this year, we will be announcing a multi-million dollar capital fundraising campaign with the goal of raising around $20 million to uh, do the renovations and construction for the zoo school, the museum school, as well as renovations to this IB Academy. Um, Coit is around a million, uh, Congress is 1.7 million, and East Leonard is, again, these are in those kind of million to two million range, North Park around two million, CA Frost is 1.5 million for the existing Frost, and seven million for the proposed high school at Coval, where we will renovate and expand the Coval facility to accommodate, accommodate those students. Sherwood Park, uh, around two million, Shawmut Hills, two million, and then there's the technology at 10. Uh, and by the way, technology, the last time we had a major investment in technology in this district was from the 2004 bond. And we had to spend that money within five years. So last I checked, this is 2015. The vast majority of our computers and our technology are between six and 10 years old. Uh, we know that most technology is functionally obsolete at least after three to five years. Our kids deserve better, they deserve the best, they deserve what many of their suburban counterparts have, and so we would inject 10 million into new and improved technology for our students. Security is not just what you think about security cameras. Part of this would go to how do we reconfigure our entryways. A Union High School, excuse me, is a great example where if anyone has gone through the student entrance, you go through the student entrance and it's over the river and through the woods and a half mile walk to the main office, which is buried in the middle of the building. That design standard, which was done in the, the 60s, is not at all aligned with the, the, the 21st century security expectations. And so we would put 10 million towards security, which includes technology, which includes cameras, but it also is gonna include how do we reconfigure those entryways so that it's a more safe, secure entry exit point for our students and our staff. This 175 million would cost uh, the average taxpayer uh, $8.33 per month, or just under $100 a year, about the cost of a Happy Meal to ensure that our students have, have high quality classrooms, have the 21st century technology and a safe, secure learning environment, and more importantly, to invest for the stability and growth of Grand Rapids Public Schools. These were the dates where we held community meetings. There's only one more remaining this week, but more importantly, this slide, we are proposing this bond vote for November 3rd, 2015. The Board of Education will be presented with final recommendations later this summer and is expected to place it on the November 3rd ballot at that time. We encourage you, to, if you want to learn more, you can go to our website. This presentation is at grps.org, along with a more detailed list of the projects that were proposed in the slideshow, and as well as an email and phone numbers where you can call and get additional information. We ask anyone if they have a small group, large group, they want to hear a presentation, please call us, bring us in. We are happy to tell this story. This GRPS success story is, is something that we should all take pride in, and now's the time for us to move forward and to take this transformation to the next level. This bond proposal is absolutely key to it. Thank you.